thank you for joining today. This is Erica James with Erica James Travel, and today's topic is all about cruising. Now, we're doing something new today, so forgive me for my eyes if I'm looking this way or this way. We're going to try to do Facebook Live and Instagram Live at the exact same time. So I hope this works because I want to try to get every viewers in on this topic about cruising. And, um, of course, we have the travel assistant extraordinaire here with us, Kim Drake. She's here with us. She's going to help me with the questions on Instagram. So if you have any questions um, that you want to ask about cruising on Instagram, just drop them, you know, just put them in. And we're going to take a few moments out every time. And Kim's going to read those questions. Same thing for Facebook. If you have questions, drop them um, down below, and I am going to answer those. But before we get started, one thing for Facebook I want you all to do, there is a button down below that will have you notify when I go live. live I want you to click that button now. So every time I go live, you will automatically be notified. Because if you don't click that button ahead of time, then you will not know when I'm going live. But today's topic is all about cruising. The very first thing that I want everyone to know is there are a lot of cruise lines. And I just want everybody to know there are more cruise lines out there than just Carnival. I know everybody loves Carnival, but there are many cruise lines out there. We have um, Carnival Cruise Lines. We have Norwegian Cruise Line. We have Royal Caribbean, Disney, Holland America, Celebrity, Princess, um, MCS Cruising, Azamar Cruising, and the list can go on and on. There are a lot of cruise lines, and there's more to cruising than just Carnival. So I'm just putting that out there because I get so many requests that I only want to go on Carnival. But some people don't really know there's other cruise lines. They only say Carnival because they don't know any other cruise lines. Okay, so there are millions of cruise lines out there and i'm exaggerating on the million, millions but there are a lot and there's something for everyone it just depends on your personality and what you want to experience and um if you're traveling with kids or not but the best thing to do is to have that conversation with your travel agent um so that you can determine what cruise line is the best for you and what you want to experience at that time now, the, um, one of the most popular questions that I get about cruising is, do you need a passport to cruise? No, you don't need a passport to cruise. I always recommend that you do have a passport when cruising, but you don't necessarily need it. If you want to cruise and you do not have a passport, then what documents you need is you need a certified government-issued photo ID, such as your driver's license, and then you'll also need your birth certificate. Um, so you'll need those two things to cruise if you're cruising without a passport. Now, for the ladies, if your last name does not match the um, last name that's on your driver's license and birth certificate, if they don't match, then you need to also take some kind of bridging document. You will need something like your marriage license or whatever bridging document that shows you how you got from one last name to the other. Um, you can also cruise with a passport card. Now, a passport card um, will allow you to cruise, and it also will allow you to go back and forth on some borders, but you cannot fly with a passport card, and you can only fly with a passport. But you can either cruise with a passport, a passport card, or your driver's license and a birth certificate. Okay, so I'm going to go on to what's included in a cruise. That's a, that's a popular question. People want to know when I pay for that cruise, what is actually included. Now, your cruise will, the cost of your cruise will get you your stateroom, your, all your food, some beverages. Alcohol is not included unless you have a cruise that specifically specifies that alcohol is included. Otherwise, you have your normal, um, orange juice, juices, teas, stuff like water, stuff like that. Um, but sodas are not included in um, the cost of your cruise. Your entertainment is included, um, things that are going on the cruise ship, stuff like that. Um, 
but things that are not included would be some of your extra costs like um, if you pay for the cruise you have to know that your air is not included um, believe it or not there are some people that believe you know if you pay for one price is your is your air included in that no the price of a cruise is the price of a cruise unless you ask the airline to include your air um, otherwise the price is just the price of the cruise Airport transfers are not included in that. So if you fly in to catch a cruise, if you if you live somewhere like, you know, I'm in Nashville, we have to fly everywhere to catch a cruise. So to get from the airport to the cruise ship, your crew, that airport transfer is not included. So that would be an additional cost. Another additional cost would be the soda package. If you want carbonated beverages, that's not included in your cruise clock cost so you would need to get a beverage package um, for carbonated drinks and most cruise lines they do offer a um, soda package that you can purchase it's usually just like a set fee um, per day you can have unlimited drinks um, shore excursions are not included in that cruise cost so when you're on the cruise and you get into port and you want to do an activity off the cruise ship then the shore excursions cost is not included in your cruise cost okay another thing is prepaid gratuities or gratuities now i do offer my clients to pay their gratuities up front there is no way of getting around these gratuities unless you have an absolutely horrible experience on a cruise so it's best that you just pay the gratuities up front. I will have some clients who opt out of, no, I don't want to add the gratuities in to the cost of my cruise, but they're like thinking they don't have to pay it. But as soon as you get on that cruise ship, they're going to add the cost of gratuities onto your bill. It, it is a must. It needs to be paid. It has to be paid. And it goes to the cost of the person that's cleaning your room every day, um, the person that's serving you in the dining room. And it's just split, it's split up amongst several people on the cruise ship that is taking care of you. So in, in order to avoid having a bill as soon as you arrive on the cruise ship, just pay it up front, include it in the cost of your cruise and get it out of the way. Cruise insurance is not included in the cost of your insurance in the cost of your cruise. That is an additional cost. And you you've all um, if you listen to my other um, Facebook lives, you know that I truly believe in traveling with insurance because you never know what's going to happen. So that is an additional expense. The drink package. Um, now, a lot of cruise lines are offering alcohol drink packages um, where you have drinks all day at, at just one lump sum cost. There are some restrictions on that. Um, I'm going to talk about that later in another um, video. But this, if you like to drink a lot and you're going to drink a lot on the cruise, I think it's a great investment. Um, if you're not a heavy drinker or don't like to drink that much, then maybe the drink package isn't for you. But alcoholic beverages are not included in the cruise cost, but you can add on a drink package to cover that. Okay. Um, some other hidden costs, they're really not hidden costs, but costs that you should know. There are a lot of um, restaurants on the cruise ship, specialty restaurants, that are not included in your cruise costs. Now, dining is included. You can go to the dining room, the buffet. They have a plethora of um, restaurants that you can eat at on the cruise ship that are included in your cost. But there are a lot of cruise ships that also have specialty restaurants that um, you can pay an additional fee. It's not a big cost, something just minimal that you can, you know, go in and eat the restaurant. So, I just, just want to pause right here and tell you, like, um, most cruise ships will have a steakhouse or Italian restaurant. Um, I want to give a shout out to Norwegian Cruise Line because I feel like Norwegian Cruise Line has some of the best food ever on their cruise ships. So if you ever um, sell Norwegian Cruise Line, they offer like a three, like a three restaurant package at the minimum. I suggest that you get it because they have a steakhouse on their hunters. I will match it up to any steakhouse on land. Um, that steakhouse, the food is so good. So if you ever sell a Norwegian cruise, 
I suggest you get the three restaurant package because my favorites are Norwegian would be the steakhouse. And then they have this Brazilian restaurant where they bring the food, you know, the meat out to you on the wheel. I'm telling you, the meat is amazing. This restaurant is amazing. The, the salad bar is amazing. The sides are amazing. The meats are amazing. It's truly delicious. And I am not, I can't, I'll be remiss if I didn't mention the Italian restaurant. And you can go to my YouTube channel to check out my um, video that I did on um, La Casino on the Norwegian Cruise Line. The best risotto that I have ever had, um, hands down. Best risotto ever. Norwegian Cruise Line has the best risotto. Okay, so um, check out the specialty restaurants when you're on the cruise ship. It, you know, it costs a little extra, but sometimes it's well worth it. And if you are selling Norwegian Cruise Line, trust me, the um, specialty re restaurants are well worth it. Okay, so that's all the fees that, um, you know, are not included when you are cruising. And I'm going to pause right there, see if we have any questions. So, no, we don't have any questions. So, so I want to talk about, I told you about the alcohol packages. So, I do want to bring up the alcohol um, policy on cruise ships, just in case you didn't know. And you can also check out my YouTube channel to get detailed information about cruise lines drink packages. Okay, so some cruise lines will allow you to bring on wine. Um, you can bring on one bottle of wine um, per passenger on some cruise lines. Some cruise lines will allow you to bring on two. Um, you can also, I know for Carnival, you can also bring on um, a 12 pack of canned soda. You can bring on water only if it's in a can, and I'm not really sure if people are selling water in a can anymore. I remember Dasani trying that for a while. Not sure if that worked out. But anyway, you can bring on um, canned soda if it's in a can, not a bottle. And you can bring on water in a can, but not a bottle on um, Carnival Cruise Line. But most cruise lines will allow you to bring on one bottle of wine per guest. Um, and you can consume that on the ship. Now, if you take that bottle of wine into the dining room, then you'll have to pay a small court fees, about $15. Um, that's the average amount, and you can consume that wine in there. So, you know, it may be beneficial for you to take the wine onto the cruise ship. Another question that I get a lot about cruising is the smoking policy. Um, you cannot smoke in your state rooms. You cannot smoke on the balcony of the state rooms, but you can smoke in the casino and they have other designated areas on the cruise ship that you can smoke. So you want to make sure that you stay within those guidelines when smoking or you'll be charged a fee and we don't want any extra fees. We're already paying enough for a cruise. We don't need any extra fees. Another tip that I want to give you is when you get on a cruise ship, explore the cruise ship. I mean, when you get on, just take a moment and walk around, um, hit every floor and see what everything the cruise ship has to offer. Read the materials that they're giving you. There is so much to offer on a cruise ship. I mean, they have something for everyone. You know, you have plenty of activities, you have dining, you have classes, um, you have the club, you have um, cooking demonstrations, you have everything. Um, there are contests, um, trivia. Recently, I just got off of a carnival cruise, um, seven day carnival glory. And I do have my um, trophy right here. I run this trophy for the Michael Jackson trivia. I am a two-time winner. That is two years in a row. Not on the same cruise ship, but no matter where I go, I'm going to win that Michael Jackson um, that Michael Jackson trivia. Um, but they have trivia. I love trivia. And they just have plenty of activities. And they have so much to offer on a cruise ship. So take time when you get on that cruise ship to explore the cruise ship and see what everything the cruise ship has to offer because you would be surprised. You have, um, not to, I mentioned all the activities, the trivia, you have a gym, you usually have a track, um, you have the spa. Um, a lot of cruise ships have um, simulated um, 
skydiving. I've done that before on a Royal Caribbean cruise and a Norwegian cruise. You have surfing, um, you have rock climbing, they have basketball, and Norwegian Cruise Line has um, created some cruise ships that even has go-kart riding on it. You have ice skating on cruise ships. I mean, it's a floating city. Any activity you can possibly think of, even zip lining, you have on a cruise ship. So explore the cruise ship, see what everything that has to offer and get around to as much as you can. And I also want to mention that Disney Cruise Line is not the only cruise ship for kids. These other, there's a lot of cruise lines who have um, kids programs. Mostly all of them have kids kids program. But Disney, you know, Disney has everything Disney related. Their cruise ship is an experience. It's not a cruise. I mean, they have magic carpets, magic mirrors. They have character breakfast, everything like that. But believe it or not, did you know Carnival also has, um, they have a contract with Dr. Seuss. So they have Dr. Seuss experiences. They have a Dr. Seuss breakfast. It's so colorful and fun. It's big fun. Royal Caribbean has DreamWorks. And they have um, a parade. They have the characters come out. I mean, it's a lot of fun, even for an adult. It's a lot of fun. So... You know, Disney can be quite expensive, and if you're on a budget and can't really afford um, the Disney experience on a cruise ship, then think about some other cruise lines like Carnival and Royal Caribbean. They can also provide you with that experience for your kids, and they also have characters and parades and big fun just like Disney. Okay, so um, I mentioned the restaurant, so I want to also encourage you to dine around on a cruise ship. When you get on a cruise ship, they have many options. There are a lot of options where to eat, um, a lot of things included. You have the buffet, you have a lot of free restaurants. Don't just limit yourself to the buffet. I mean, these cruise ships have gotten advanced. I just recently got off of the Carnival Glory, and they had Guy Fieri's Burger Joint. I mean. I had waited months to get on this cruise ship to try the Guy Fieri burger. I mean, it was absolutely amazing. I absolutely loved it. It was well worth the wait. And I actually will book another cruise just to have that burger um, and those fries. It was delicious. So don't limit yourself to the buffet. Try everything else on the cruise line because they have many places to eat. You'll often have time have Mexican on there, um, barbecue, the, the buffet, they have the dining room. And me personally, I always eat my breakfast in the dining room. I don't go to the buffet. Um, I just get like that personal experience, that personal touch, that different menu in the dining room for breakfast. And that's where I tend to eat my um, breakfast, not always at the buffet. And then one tip that you can do is at the beginning of each day, find out what each restaurant is serving. You can pull up the menu or you can see the menu outside of the restaurant and see what um, that dining room is um, serving or what the restaurants are serving. So then you can determine where you want to eat, where you want to go, and um, plan your dining around that. But I encourage you, don't eat at the same place all the time on a cruise ship because you are totally missing out on the dining experience. Cruise ships have gotten advanced. They have gone out of their way to provide such a great dining experience, and you want to experience all of that. It's more to a cruise than just the buffet and the dining room, okay? So, and also, don't forget about room service. Room service is also included on a cruise line. Now, this I just recently um, discovered. Now, I recently cruised Norwegian Cruise Line, and they do charge, Norwegian and Royal Caribbean charge a flat delivery fee for room service. Um, back in the day, room service was completely free. It was included, but now things have changed. So Norwegian Cruise Line and Royal, I know that they offer um, whatever you want to eat and order however much you want, and then there's a flat delivery charge. However, I, I hadn't cruised Carnival in a long time, so I cruised Carnival last week and didn't realize that there's a charge for each 
menu item. There's not a flat fee. You have to pay for whatever you order. It's not a big deal. You know, French fries, maybe $2. It's not a big amount, but the fact still remains. They still charge me for everything that I order on Carnival Cruise Line. And, you know, that doesn't sit well with me. I'm a huge room service fan. I like what I like. So, you know, I was not happy about the charge for every individual item, but I still have my Royal Caribbean and Norwegian where I can order anything I want for one flat fee. I don't mind that, but still take part in the um, room service because um, one thing I like to do is um, if I have a balcony room, I love to order room service. I love to order my breakfast in the morning, sit on the balcony, have my breakfast, um, have coffee, and just sail down the ocean. It's just such a great experience. At the same time at night, I like to have a cocktail out there. So you can just order your room service, utilize your room service, and um, it's just another dining option. But be aware of the charges with that. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna talk about is what to wear on a cruise. Um, because I do get this all the time. I have a group going on a cruise and um, that is their biggest concern, what to wear. If you have not cruised in a long time, um, you would be surprised to know that cruising is not as formal as it used to be. Cruising used to be all glamorous, dress code, um, dressing up every night for dinner, far from what is going on right now. For instance, Norwegian Cruise Line, their motto is, you know, um, cruising however you want. Basically, I'm paraphrasing, but it really is. It's cruising however you want. Um, you will find people with um, cut off shorts, a uh, swimsuit cover up and flip flops, all the way up to a ball gown and a sequence. You're going to find everything from one spectrum to the next, and um, you'll be surprised. Uh, you can do whatever you want. There are no rules. There are no rules outside of the dining room, I should say. But if you are going into the dining room, you know, they will have rules like no wife beaters or, you know, no cut off shorts or shirt like that when you go into the dining room. However, you can do basically what you want and wear what you want. So, you know, everyone knows my motto is vacation how you want a vacation and just do what you want. So don't feel pressured that you have to pack in your suitcase all of these dress up items and things like that and just basically wear what you want. Kim is giving me the signal everybody on Facebook that I need to give Instagram a little love. So I am turning over giving Instagram a little love. Hi everybody on Instagram. Hi everybody on Facebook as well. I see we have um, my one of my favorite travelers, um, Sharisha Williams. Tamia supports me every week. Sherry, Roberta, Julius, hi, welcome for joining. Um, Kim, do we have any Instagram people? Talk to Ingrid. Talk to Ingrid. Hi, Ingrid. Thanks for joining. Hope you're learning a lot. So I am going to talk about. Um, being in port when your cruise ship arrives in port now my suggestion is before you go on a cruise that you research the ports that you are going to um, stop in um, you can always reach um, I'm a big fan of reaching out to your travel agent most travel agents have been to almost every port so ask them for their suggestions um, but you should research that and find out what it is that you want to do because I'm gonna tell you most ports are designed to sell you stuff and to have you shop and it's all about jewelry if you go to Alaska Everything is about jewelry. So if you sail to Alaska, I suggest you have some kind of activities so you can get the whole essence of Alaska. Because if not, all you're going to be doing is going from jewelry store to jewelry store to jewelry store. And that is basically like most ports. They're designed to sell you stuff. They want you to shop. So if you go into port and you don't have any activity and all you want to do is, uh, all you're going to get is shopping. That's not experiencing the um, port. 
And I, this is just my opinion. I believe that cruise ships allow you to get a taste of each port. So you want to get a taste of that port, but you can't get a taste of that port if you stay right there in the shopping area. So I suggest you find some activities. And there are some ports that you get into that you really don't need to do an activity. Uh, for instance, I just got back from a cruise that stopped at Grand Turk. Now, this is a port that if you if it's in your um, itinerary, then you probably can spend your money in other ports and save Grand Turk for something where you don't have to spend any money because they have a great beach. They have a great pool at... Um, margaritaville that you can just have a blast and that's no money needed to spend so also another good port is costa maya um you really don't have to spend any money in that port they have some fan they have a fantastic beach beach chairs out there they have a great bar they also have a pool there so Wherever your cruise ship is going to stop, consult your travel agent or do your own research and figure out, um, do I really need to spend money in this port? Does this port have anything to offer me or do I really need to schedule an activity? Speaking of, one of the biggest questions when I get about activities is people ask me, should I book a shore excursion before I arrive on the cruise ship or should I wait to get there? My opinion on that is if it's something that you absolutely know you want to do and are going to do, book it ahead of time. The most popular shore excursions book up fast. If you are on the fence about it, then don't don't be afraid. Get on the cruise ship, and but you will need to book the day before that morning. Don't wait till the evening because things are selling out the day before. So. Um, like I said, if it's something that you know you're going to absolutely do, book it before you get on the cruise. If it's something you're on the fence about, then you can wait till you get on the cruise, but you can't wait too long because things go fast. So if you've never been on a cruise, as Sherry said, she's never been on a cruise before and she's really trying to, you know, convince someone to go. I say try it. Just try it. You're not going to know if you like cruising or not unless you try it. I would definitely say there are three-day cruises. Take a three-day cruise and see how you like it. And if you enjoy it, then work your way up to a four-day, a five-day, six, seven, eight. I've gone up to eight days before. I've done an eight-day cruise. I love cruising, and it doesn't bother me to be on a ship that long. Uh, but I would say if you are on the fence about it, start small. And I know a lot of people worry about getting seasick. Okay, trust me, I'm one of those people. I cruise so much, it doesn't bother me. I get car sick. You know, I can't look down in a car. I can't ride in the back seat. I literally get sick. So you would think I would be a person that would be really afraid to cruise, but I'm not because I, you know, take the necessary precautions. I take Dramamine before I get on a cruise, and then I'm fine. You know, you have little patches that you can put behind your um, ear to make sure that, you know, you don't get seasick. And if you're really worried about seasick, then you need to choose your room wisely. The higher the floor, the less you're going to feel the motion of the boat if there is choppy waters. Normally you don't feel it, but if there's choppy waters and you're afraid about getting seasick, you need to book your room on a high floor as well as in the middle of the cruise ship to avoid um, feeling that. Now, when booking um, a cruise, you booking your room, the lower, the cheaper rooms are on the lowest floor, like floor two, the like right above the crew. So you want to keep that in mind. And there are several different types of rooms you want to consider, like an interior room has no windows, um, but it's going to be the least expensive um, room. An ocean view has a window. You may get a square window. You may get a little round circle where you can just look out. Um, but then there's the balcony. My favorite room, a balcony and above is my favorite room. And I encourage people to book a balcony stateroom. A lot of people say, I don't need to pay for a balcony stateroom. I'm not going to be in the room that much. But 
honey, when you're in the room, you are going to enjoy that balcony. It's going to be the best thing ever. I mean, just think about it. Wake up in the morning and sit out on that balcony. And if I order a balcony stateroom, I'm always going to order the port side um, for a couple of reasons. It's like when you wake up in the morning and you know you're going to arrive into port that morning, I'm going to go out on that balcony. And when you're pulling up into that port, some of the views are just absolutely amazing when you're pulling up in the port, if you're on the port side. Um, also what is funny too, is when you get back on the ship and if you're on the port side, I love to sit on my balcony and watch all the cruisers running to get on the ship because they waited to the last minute to get back on the ship. It's hilarious. So you're sitting down on the balcony and you're watching everybody run to get back on the ship, hoping not to get left. It's not something to laugh about, but it's funny to see everybody, um, run on the cruise ship. But then also... I mean, it's just the sound of the ocean and the waves and that breeze. You're just sitting out on that balcony in the comfort of your own room, and you're just experiencing um, just peace and tranquility out on that balcony. I mean, you can order your breakfast. You order a cup of coffee in the morning and sit out there and watch the sun rise in your pajamas and you know, you're reflecting on all the blessings that you have um, about being on that cruise ship because not a lot of people are not able. If you're on that balcony and reflecting your blessings, I mean, it's just a wonderful feeling. So I went and think about price when I'm looking at a room for a cruise. Think about what you want to experience because it is an experience. And you may feel like you're not going to be in that room a lot, but when you are, you have something to experience. Just think about at the end of the day, you're sitting on that balcony, you're having a cocktail or a glass of wine, and that breeze is coming through, and you know, the sound of the ocean, and you're just like, oh, this is amazing. This is life. So think about that when you are selecting a room. Don't select a room based on price. Select a room based on what you want to experience. And it may be frowned upon, but I have done this more than one occasion that if I have a balcony room, I sleep with my um, balcony door open. I mean, it is just the best sleep ever to have that breeze of the ocean coming through your door and the sound of the waves. I mean, it's just great. Okay, we do have a, a question as to Captain Ball. Is it still formal? Um, it You need to dress up, but you don't necessarily have to. Now, as I mentioned earlier, cruising is not as formal as it used to be. They still have the captain's dinner. Um, I just got off of a seven-day cruise, and we had two formal nights. And we had people in our group who dressed in sequences, but me, I mean, it's my vacation, people. I don't want to do makeup. I don't want to do hair. I don't want to dress up. I put on a simple sundress and I went to dinner and enjoyed it. I had the same meal as everybody else, the same experience. I just wasn't dressed up. So again, it's all in what you want to experience, but at the same time, you can't go in there with some cut-off shorts and jeans. Um, you do have to be somewhat presentable on Captain's Night. But a cute little sundress is just fine. You know, you don't have to wear a tie if you're a guy. You don't have to suit coat. Just a nice button-down would be great. Okay? So I'm trying to think of anything else I can think about when it comes to cruising. Like I said, I just got off of a cruise, so everything is just fresh on my mind. I'm here to answer any questions that you have. Um, if you have an upcoming cruise and you want to know anything, drop those questions below. Even after this session ends, I will continue to um, stay on and keep um, responding to the comments. But I do want to offer you all something free. Ah, something free. If you are going on a cruise or have a cruise coming up, Definitely go to my website, ericajamestravel.com. That's Erica with a C, not a K. And download your free cruise check-in list. So I'm going to offer you all this free is what I pack in my bags when I am setting for a cruise. So go to my website 
and definitely download that pack and checklist and for yourself to use. And again, um, since there are no more questions, I'm gonna wrap this up. But if you think of any questions, do not hesitate to drop them in the comments below and I will continue to respond to those questions for the rest of the evening and throughout the week. I hope everybody learned something today. Hope you got any tips or things you didn't know about cruising. And most importantly, if you have never cruised before, it is my hopes that you do try cruising. So thank you for joining. Thank you for supporting me. And please don't forget, if you are Facebook Live, click that button below that you want to be notified every time I go live so you'll always be in the know because I just don't go live for travel tips but when I turn up I go live and I know you want to see that okay so um thank you everybody and have a great rest of the evening again I'm Erica James with Erica James Travel and I hope you enjoyed today's session on cruising Thank you.